Hi everyone, my name is Samriddhi Kurar and in this lecture we are going to solve the problem of maximum index. It is a medium level problem of array and in the question we are given an array of n positive integers and our task is to find the maximum of j minus i such that a of i is less than equal to a of j. Let's take a look at example. Here we have 1 and 10. So there are only two elements and the only possible condition to check first is if array of i is less than equal to array of j. Yes, 1 is less than equal to 10. And what is the maximum of this? Is j minus i, which is 1 minus 0. So it is 1. So the output 1 will be returned. But taking a look at example number 2, now this is a bigger array of size n. Here we have all these elements. First we'll check one by one if array of i is less than equal to array of j. For 34, less than j. There are 8, 10, 3, 2, 30, 33 and 1. But what is the maximum j minus i which we can find? As we look through the array, we'll find that the maximum is j minus i is 7 minus 1. So what is the seventh element? What is the element present at the seventh index? So it is 33. And what is the element present at index 1? It is 8. So 8 is less than 33 and that is maximum of j minus i which we can get through this array. So output 6 will be returned. Here we have to check one by one and we'll see what is the maximum of j minus i which is giving and which is satisfying this condition. And our task is to find the maximum index difference using time complexity order of n and auxiliary space also order of n. So now let's look at the code. So let's take a look at the driver code first. Here we have the in the main function we have t as the number of test cases, n as the size of the array and arr as the array for which we will accept the elements one by one by running a for loop from i is equal to 0 till less than n. And here the array elements are being inputted. And now we move on to the function which is max index difference and here we will pass the array and n as the parameters. So let's move to the function now. Initially we have max and min defined, we will look at it later. But now, for now we need to move on to the max different function. So here we have defined an array and let's take an example as mentioned in example number 2. So this is our array which we need to look at and we initially defined the max index difference and i and j as the variables. And now since we are allowed a time complexity and space complexity of order of n, we'll make two different arrays, two different new arrays, R max and L min. So what do these stand for? Basically, R max is the maximum elements from the right hand side. So we can see it like that from 1 and 33. What is the max element? It is 33. Out of 30 and 33, the maximum element is 33. Out of these, it is 80 and so on. So R max is basically calculating the maximum elements as we move from the right hand side. And as going by the name, L min is basically calculating the minimum elements as we move from the left side. So initially out of 8 and 34, what is the minimum? It is 8. Out of 8 and 10, the minimum is 8. Out of 10 and 3, minimum is 3 and so on. So these are the two arrays which we define. So for now, let's just calculate L min elements one by one. So initially L min of 0 will be the array of 0. Since we are starting from the left side, so the zeroth element of l min will be array of 0 which is 34 and we will loop from i is equal to 1 till less than n we will go from one index to last index and we will calculate the minimum element so now in this particular line we are comparing the min of array of i and i minus 1 so what is array of i it is array of 1 and what is i minus 1 it is l min of 0 so we are basically checking, in this line we are basically checking what is the minimum value out of array of 1 and L min of 0. So we are basically checking what is the minimum value out of these both and how we calculate using the min function. And that is what it was defined over here. In the min function we are basically passing two values and this is using the ternary operator. If x is less than y then x will be returned and if not then y will be returned so basically the minimum value will be returned from min function and from max the maximum will be returned so if x is greater than y then x will be returned and if not then y will be returned so here we are calculating minimum out of array of 1 and l min of 0 so out of array of 1 which is 8 
एंड थर्टी फोर वट इज द मिनिमम वैल्यू इट इज एट सो इन एल मेन ऑफ वन वी आर स्टोरिंग एट सो टू एलिमेंट्स ऑफ एल मेन हैव बीन डिफाइंड नाउ वील मूव टू आई इज इक्वल टू टू एंड वील चेक आउट ऑफ आर एफ टू एंड एल मेन ऑफ वन वट इज एल मेन ऑफ वन नाउ इट इज एट सो इट इज बेसिकली चेकिंग आउट ऑफ आर एफ टू एंड आउट ऑफ एल मेन ऑफ वन वट इज द मिनिमम वैल्यू सो आउट ऑफ एट एंड टेन द मिनिमम वैल्यू इज एट एंड सो ऑन सो वील जस्ट लूप थ्रू द आर एज so we'll find the minimum elements one by one so now we have compared all the elements one by one and according to that we have calculated the minimum possible value for every element so just take a quick recap at this 34 was assigned the same place and now 8 and 34 were compared and 8 came at the as a result 10 and 8 were compared and 8 was the minimum one 3 and 8 were compared and 3 was the minimum one and so on so this is the l main array which has been formed now we'll form the r max array like that so we'll start the r max array so we'll start the r max array from the right hand side and according to that the index will be n minus 1 since the size is n so the index has to be n minus 1 so it will be array of n minus 1 so basically the last element of r max will be 1 and we'll keep on assigning the values before that means towards the left hand side from right to left now we'll start the array or the j from n minus 2 so we are basically starting from here and we are going to zero till the starting of the array since it is starting from the back side so now we'll calculate the max elements one by one here for first example what is n minus 2 n is 8 here so n minus 2 will be 7 so basically we are comparing array of 7 With r max of eight, what is r max of eight? It is one. What is array of seven? It is thirty-three. So out of one and thirty-three, what is the maximum value? It is thirty-three. Now j will become n minus three. So we are basically comparing array of six with r max of seven. And out of both of these, what is array of six? It is thirty. What is r max of seven? It is thirty-three. So out of thirty and thirty-three, the maximum value is thirty-three. So we'll just loop through the array elements again and again, and we'll calculate the R max like that. So we have calculated the R max array, and surprisingly, six elements came out to be eighty because eighty was the maximum value present. So as we compared the elements again and again. 80 came out to be the maximum value, which we can see when we check for all these elements. The maximum will be 80. So in this manner, L min and R max have been calculated. Now we'll run a loop and check for every element one by one, and we'll calculate the max difference. So now I is equal to zero and J is equal to zero initially, and max difference has been defined as minus one. So that when we'll compare with the difference. Every time the other element will be max. So initially, max difference has been defined as minus one. And while j is less than n and i is less than n, we'll run through that loop. So let's just copy these elements here. This is the R max array. And for l min. And this is the L min R. So now we'll check every time. If L min of i is less than equal to R max of j, we'll check if L min of i, which is thirty four, is less than equal to eighty. Yes, it is. So since thirty four is less than eighty, now we'll move to this particular if block, and we'll calculate the max of max difference and j minus i. So what are j and i over here? They are both zero. So j minus i will give us zero. And what was the max difference? It was minus one. So out of minus one and zero, what is the max difference? It is zero. So the max value of these will be zero. And in max difference, now we'll be storing zero. So we'll just run that again and again and check. And now j will become one, since initially it was zero. So j is equal to j plus one. But I won't be changed because we haven't entered this else block till now. Now 
j is equal to 1 and i is equal to 0. So now we will check if l min of i which is l min of 0 which is 34 is less than equal to r max of j which is r max of 1. So it is 80. So 34 is less than equal to 80. Yes, again it has entered this block. So now we will again calculate the max of max difference and j minus i. What was our max difference? It was 0. But what is j minus i now? j is 1 and i is 0. So this will return us 1. And out of 0 and 1, what is the max value? It is 1. So in max difference now, 1 will be stored. Again, j will become from 1, it will go to 2. So it will go here. Again, we will check if L min of i, i is 0 again and R max of j which is 80. Again the same condition, 34 is less than or equal to 80. Yes it is. So now again we will calculate the max of max difference which is 1 and j minus i. What is j? It is 2. And what is i? It is 0. So j minus i is 2. And out of 1 and 2, the maximum value is 2. So again, maximum difference has become 2 and j has become 3. So this will be continued till here. j is 3, 4 and 5. So we can see j will come to 5 position and again we will check if that is the case. So here at the end, max difference will be 5 and j will be 6. Because all the elements till index number 5 are same, so we will just keep on checking if 34 is less than 80. The same condition will be passed again and again. So we have just skipped that part and we have the max difference as 5 and j as 6. Now the condition will change. What we will see? We will check if L min of i which is again 0 is less than equal to R max of j. Now R max is of j will be 33. So we will check if 34 is less than or equal to 33. No, this is not the case. So now we will move to the else block and now i will become from 0, finally i will become 1. Now we will check again, what is i? It is 1. And what is j? It is 6 because it hasn't changed here. So again, now we will check if l min of i which is 8 is less than or equal to r max of j which is 33. So 8 is less than or equal to 33. Now again this condition has been satisfied. Now we have checked 8 is less than or equal to 33. Yes, this was the case. So what was the max difference? It was 5. And what was j? It was 6. What was i? It was 1. So j minus i is also giving us 5. So out of 5 and 5, the max value is 5. So this won't change. Max difference is still 5. But now j will become 7. From 6, it will become 7. i won't be changed. It is 1. Again, i is 1. What is j? It is 7 and that is also 33. So 8 is less than or equal to 33? Yes. But now the only difference will be max difference was 5 but j will j minus i is 7 minus 1 which is 6. So 5 and 6. Out of 5 and 6 the maximum value is 6. So now our max difference is 6 and now j has come to 8. So again we will check j is 8, i is 1. What is i of, uh, what is l min of 1? It is 8. What is r max of j? It is 1. 8 less than or equal to 1. No, the condition is not satisfied. So i will become from 1 to 2. So what is l min of 2 now? It is 8. The same thing. And what is j of 8? It is 1. Again, i will move from 2 to 3 and so on. So this will be done. Keep on going till we reach here. So these conditions won't be satisfied as for every value, 1 is less. For 2 it is less, for 2, for 30, for 30, 1 will always be the lesser value. So we will keep on doing till we reach i is equal to 8. And now we, will ch we are checking if 1 is less than or equal to 1. Yes, that is satisfied. It is the equality condition which is satisfied. So we will calculate the max difference. Now what is max difference? It is 6. What is j minus i? j is also 8. i is also 8. So this is basically 0. And out of 6 and 0, the maximum value remains 6. So the max difference hasn't been changed till the end. But now j will come to 9. 
so this condition is not satisfied because j is not less than n now so the loop will be broken and we move on to this return statement which is max difference so at the end what will be returned in max difference it will be 6 and that is the output which is expected so in example number 2 we can see the output should be 6 and that is what we have seen in this dry run of code so now let's just compile and run this to check it again so for this particular case also out of 1 and 10 as we saw in example number 1 the maximum of jni is 1 so this was the code for maximum difference thank you for watching Thank <music> you.